the algebras. So Manoj, you you are welcome to begin your lecture. Uh, thank you, Jugal. Yeah. So this is part two of my lectures, and in this we look at uh, absolute integral closure uh, in prime characteristic and prove that that's a Bicot and Macaulay algebra. Okay. And uh, this is, the notes are available. I mean, these slides are available at this URL uh, below. So this is so. Uh, recall that in the previous lecture we looked at uh, the the Bicot and Macaulay algebras conjecture of Hoxter uh, and some application like vanishing of maps of Tor, etc. So in this in this we uh, we look at uh, sorry. Am I audible? I get some bad echo too much myself. Uh, just one moment. Yeah, yeah. You, you can. Yeah, you you can continue. Okay. Uh, so in this lecture, we will look at uh, uh, a proof of uh, uh, proof that uh, the absolute integral closure is uh, Bicot and Macaulay algebra by Unicke and Lubesnik, uh, and uh, uh, so that's that's what we will look at in this lecture. This lecture is a little technical because I would like to give an idea of the proof of that theorem. So here uh, is the uh, is the plan. Uh, uh, so first, we will look at the statement that we. Uh, we saw last time, and then we will get a sketch of that from the main theorem, and then we will look at a, a sketch of a proof of the main theorem. And time permitting, at the end, we will uh, just uh, look at a result about separability. Okay, so throughout this talk, uh, RM denotes an Noetherian local ring, uh, except in one lemma, but I will point out at that point. It's still Noetherian, but uh, I mixed up the notation, and there I just don't assume it's. Right. I shouldn't assume it's local, but I will mention it at that point. Okay. Uh, recall that an R algebra S is said to be a balanced Big Cohen Macaulay R algebra if every system of parameters uh, is uh, an R regular sequence. And uh, assume that R is a domain. Uh, the absolute integral closure R plus of R is the integral closure of R in an algebraic closure of its fraction field. So here is a theorem that uh, we want to sketch a proof of. Let R be a domain of characteristic P, a positive prime characteristic, uh, still Noetherian local. Uh, that is a homomorphic image of a Gorenstein local ring. Then R plus is a balanced Big Cohen Macaulay R algebra. So this is uh, what, uh, uh, just to sketch a proof of this result uh, that we will try to do in this, in this lecture. Okay, so this result itself follows from a vanishing result on local cohomology, which is that uh, for all i less than the dimension of r, the local cohomology with support in M of r plus is zero. So first, uh, we will uh, sketch a proof of this implication, that vanishing of local cohomology implies the cohen macaulay of r plus. So, that, so that's what I will do. Uh, uh, so then we will try to find a proof of this vanishing of local cohomology. So that's the plan. Okay, so just to uh, just to review, just to get the definition. So let uh, uh, I be an uh, uh, ideal of R generated by say D elements x1 through xd. Again, for this definition, no need to assume that R is local. Okay, uh, define the I torsion functor gamma sub i on R modules, which is, so look at the annihilator of I to the n inside M, and then increase n, and this, uh, this forms an in, uh, grow, uh, ascending family of submodules of M, and take the union, that will also be a submodule, and that we denote by gamma i of M. So this is called the I torsion, gamma i is a functor, and it's called the I torsion functor. And uh, it is left exact, and it is covariant. Okay. So we can talk about its uh, right derived functors. Okay. So the right derived functors of gamma i are called the local cohomology functors. And we'll say with support in i. Uh, okay. And these are denoted by h, uh, h sub i, okay. indexed by the non-negative integers. Okay. 
So now we will go to a sketch of the uh, implication that vanishing of local cohomology implies Bicko and Macaulay-ness uh, for R plus. Okay. So we take a system of parameters now for R. So this is this R is local. So in the theorems we would take R to be local. Otherwise, uh, R could, in the definitions R could be anything. Okay. So we want to show that uh, this. Uh, uh, system of parameters is an R regular sequence. Okay, so since M R plus is not equal to R plus, this is by Cohen Seidenberg theorems. Going uh, lying over, this is an integral extension. Okay, we need to only show that X J is a non-zero divisor on R plus mod the first J minus one elements. This is true for every. Uh, j greater than or equal to 2. Uh, uh, note that R plus is a domain, so uh, x1 is a non-zero divisor. Okay. So from j greater than or equal to 2 onwards, we need to show this, that xj is a non-zero divisor going modulo the previous elements. Okay, so we can assume since x, it is true for x1, uh, the statement is true for j equals 1, we can assume that j is greater than or equal to 2. And assume by induction that the first j minus one elements is R regular. So this is this will be our induction hypothesis. Yeah. And uh, so we'll just introduce a notation. Uh, we write I sub t for the ideal generated by uh, the first uh, t elements uh, of this uh, uh, first ele t elements in the sequence uh, uh, in in R. Ideal generated by them in R. Okay. So we need to, uh, let's look at what it means for xj to be a non-zero divisor on R mod ij plus 1. Okay. So that's what we, we need to do. Okay. So since this is a system of parameters, xj cannot be in the union of minimal primes over R mod ij uh, minus 1. Because at each time, the dimension has to come. Each time we go modulo a new xj, uh, the dimension has to go down. So uh, this uh, xj cannot be in this union. Okay. Hence, to prove that xj is a non-zero divisor on uh, on this R plus mod x1 through xj minus 1 R plus, okay. it suffices to show the following, that every element of the maximal ideal that's not in this union of minimal uh, minimal primes over ij uh, is a non-zero divisor on this on this R mod x1 uh, x1 to xj minus 1 R plus. Okay. So this is what uh, uh, to, uh, we need to show. Uh, this uh, it suffices to show this okay, that every element in this uh, in the complement of this union is a non-zero divisor. Okay. So to this end, we make the following claim: that is, M is not associated to that quotient. So remember this this thing here is uh, r plus mod i j minus one r plus. Okay. So not we just uh, the claim is that m is not associated to uh, to r plus. Okay. So unless we go modulo a full system of parameters, m won't be associated. So that's what the previous claim. I mean the the, the claim the first line uh, uh, says. Okay. So for now, uh, let's assume the thing. And let's let's take up an associated prime of R plus mod i j minus one R plus. Okay. So, okay. so now uh, computing absolute integral closure and uh, localization in R commutes with each other. Okay. And so, if you take so if p is associated to this, then okay, R R p plus is R plus in which elements outside elements in R outside p are inverted. Okay. So because of this, because of the assumption on P, it follows that P R P is associated to R P is an associated prime of uh, R P plus mod I J R P plus. Okay. So this okay, is just uh, so that it is associated will be preserved when one localizes. Now let's look at the above claim. Above claim say, says that if you don't go modulo a full system of parameters, M won't be associated. So if you apply that here, it says that 
IJ must be a full system of parameters inside the local ring. Okay. That's what it says. So IJ, uh, sorry, IJ minus one is a full system of parameters in for RP. That's what uh, the claim will imply in this situation. Okay. In other words, P is a minimal prime over IJ. Okay. So in other words, what we have proved is every associated prime of R plus mod IJ R plus is minimal over IJ. Okay. That's what, so it says that every, this shows that every element of M minus the complement of the minimal, union of the minimal associated primes is a non-zero divisor on, on uh, R plus mod uh, IJ, uh, IJ minus one R plus. Okay. So this is what, uh, uh, this is what uh, uh, this statement is. Okay. So in particular, XJ is a non-zero divisor on R plus mod XJ, uh, X1 through XJ minus one R plus. Okay. So this is what we wanted to prove. I mean, modulo the, I mean, so we have done, I mean, we have sort of given a sketch of the proof. Modulo the, uh, uh, the, the claim that, this is the claim that we had made earlier, that M is not associated to R plus mod IJ minus one R plus, if I mean, for every J less than or equal to D, in other words, if you don't go modulo a full system of parameters, it won't be associated, M won't be associated. Okay, so now uh, to show this, to say that M is associated to this module is to say that M kills some non-zero elements in this module. But if you look at, so this is, remember, Recall that uh, because H was a right derived functor, this is the same thing as gamma I, uh, sorry, gamma M. Gamma M. So if to show that M is not associated to this, one can show that gamma M of this module is zero, which is just saying H zero uh, M is zero. Okay, so this is what uh, we will show. Okay, so now uh, by our induction hypothesis, x1 through xj minus 1 is R plus regular. Hence, for t less than or equal to j minus 1, we have an exact sequence like this. Okay. xt is a non-zero divisor on R plus mod it minus 1. Okay, so it's a non-zero divisor. And then quotient is R plus mod IT. So we have an exact sequence. Okay. Now, because local cohomology is defined, I mean, it's a right derived functor for some left exact functor, uh, it would induce an exact sequence in uh, local, every short exact sequence will, of modules will induce a uh, long exact sequence in local cohomology. Okay. So if you repeatedly apply this, okay, we will get the following, um, repeatedly apply this, starting from t equals 0, which is i i 0 defined to be 0, and repeatedly do this, we will get the following statement, which is that h i uh, m of r plus mod i t r plus 0, whenever i is less than, strictly less than d minus t. So one just has to write out for t equals 1, what is the statement, t equals 2, what is the statement, etc. To prove this, one will have to be a statement like this will follow from a vanishing of hi for it minus 1 and hi plus 1 of it minus 1. And then for that, you know, when you go down to p minus 2, it would say i plus 2 and so on. And in any case, this is what the conclusion would be. And then uh, we just apply this. Sorry, I just want i0 zero is 0. And we would get this vanishing and apply this result now with i equals 0 and t equals j minus 1. Okay. So this proves this vanishing, this, this vanishing here, okay, which proves this claim. And that claim, we just observed that, that claim will prove that xj is a non-zero divisor on r plus mod ij minus 1 r plus. Okay. So this is the sketch of the proof that the vanishing of local cohomology will imply the cohen macauliness of r plus. Are there any questions? Uh, 
uh, none in the chat box okay uh, okay so now hence we need to show this vanishing that h i uh, m of r plus uh, is uh, zero for all i less than uh, dimension of r which we will now start denoting by d okay. so note that r plus itself is a directed a direct limit of s r algebras s what are r algebras i mean where s varies in the family of finite r sub algebras of r plus okay so we have uh, some r i mean r is fixed s varies in this family and all of this is inside r plus and this is finite or finitely generated equ equivalently okay so this is what uh, we have therefore uh, taking local cohomology commutes uh, in the family uh, 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 with direct limits in family of r modules uh, so uh, one gets this uh, this thing that hi of r plus is the direct limit of hi of m uh, him of s where s varies in the same family okay. uh, finite uh, r sub algebras of r plus okay so okay so i'm i'm i written something somewhat vague which i'll make it a little precise when i state the theorem so so since this is a, a direct limit it suffices to show that if you have a map in this system then after composing with further and further extensions the map becomes uh, zero then the map uh, okay so if we have a map from hi mr to hi ms so since this is the direct limit so there will be some some s prime further down here i mean further away from this and so on and so if uh, uh, so then the compos the composition here will be what uh, uh, what will show up in the direct limit and so if we prove that eventually this is zero then it will show that local cohomology m in r plus is zero so this is what uh, we want uh, uh, we want to show okay okay so here is the the theorem which asserts this uh, let rm be a d dimensional noetherian local domain of prime characteristic that is a homomorphic image of a gorenstein ring in other words a quotient of a gorenstein ring or finite over a gorenstein local ring okay. let s be a finite r sub algebra of r plus okay. and let i be less than d then there exists a finite s sub algebra s prime of r plus such that uh, this is true the map in local cohomology from s to s prime is zero okay so therefore in the direct limit i mean any class in uh, if you take a class in h i m s okay at some further stage it would be zero so its image inside r plus will be zero okay, so this is what uh, and therefore the direct limit itself will be zero okay so this is what uh, 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 what we need to prove okay uh, just one just to uh, when we say something is a finite r sub uh, sorry here when you say finite s sub algebra of r s prime it is it is also finite over r okay so it still stays within the same family of finite sub algebras of r finite r sub algebras of r prime, r plus okay so it's stays within the same family all these okay so as i just as consequently because of this one can one sees that hi far plus which is the limit of such hi am of s is zero for all i less than d okay so this is the I mean, proving that the maps are zero in this family will imply the vanishing of the direct limit which is what we wanted to uh, prove okay so let me just uh, do a brief interlude into local cohomology again uh, so this is the stable kozhul complex uh, which is uh, which is another way to cons uh, to describe local cohomology so x1 through xd is an r so so in the first so here is just r and here is r which single one of those things uh, inverted then pairs inverted and triples inverted and so on finally at the dth stage uh, 
uh, all the d of them inverted. So this is uh, uh, so this is indexed cohomologically. So this will be zero. This will be one, two, and so on. This will be d. Okay. Where the maps come up to a sign localization maps. So it is just r sitting inside r to r xi, not necessarily uh, injected, but r to r xi with up to some sign. One can fix it and make this to a complex. Okay. Similarly, r xi to r xi xj localization maps. Okay. So putting them, uh, arranging them with some sign will give uh, a complex like this. Okay. And uh, it's, a, uh, it's, it's a fact that for all R modules M, HI of I is the ith cohomology of this complex tensored with M. Okay. Whenever up to radical I is same as X1 through XT. In other words, radical of I is uh, radical of uh, X1, through, the ideal generated by X1 through XT. So this description is useful to, to observe that uh, Frobenius map of the ring act, uh, induces a Frobenius map on local cohomology modules of that ring. So here is how it goes. So the Frobenius map on R or any ring just raising to the pth power commutes with localization. So that's what, I, that's what this diagram says. If you localize and then apply Frobenius. So here is the Frobenius. This is the Frobenius map of R. This is the Frobenius map of U inverse R, but they commute. Uh, so that's what. Uh, yeah, so, th so there is a commutative diagram like this. So because the, because the Czech complex, the maps involve uh, involve localization. From this, one observes that the Frobenius map induces a map of complexes from the Czech complex to the stable control complex to itself, and hence it induces a map on homology. Okay. So let's just briefly look at what this means uh, in, uh, in I mean, what it concretely means. So let's take a, uh, let's take a homology uh, uh, class alpha. Uh, so sorry, what is I here? Uh, so let me just anyway. So I forgot to mention it earlier. The I here denotes x1 through xd. I mean, this discussion is general, not having anything to do with the local ring that we are considering. Okay. Uh, so let alpha be a, a, a element of H i uh, r. Well, it's a homology element, so it is represented by a cycle. Let's denote that cycle uh, a over b. It's a tuple. So this is not a single element. This is a tuple uh, of uh, you know, d choose i elements. That is uh, in uh, uh, in uh, uh, cycle inside CI. Okay. So then uh, alpha to the p okay, is the element of the cohomology represented by the cycle given by this the same tuple uh, a to the p over b to the p. That is f applied to that uh, direct sum of localizations of R. So a to the p over uh, b to the p and just a notational thing, we will write alpha to the p to the e for the f e to the f e of alpha which is the e th iterate of uh, f f applied to f applied to and so on we will write alpha to the p to the e okay so remember th these two things are just and so is this okay so this is what uh, this is how sort of concretely frobenius acts on uh, the uh, uh, the local cohomology module described in terms of cycles. Okay, so now uh, I uh, let me give a uh, quick overview, and from this we will identify two steps that will have to be done, and then I will try to sketch a proof of those two steps. So uh, recall our assertion that given a finite S R algebra S, a finite R subalgebra S which is inside R plus, there is a finite S of algebra S prime such that this map is zero. Okay. So the first step is to find a finite subalgebra S tilde of R plus. Okay. Remember R plus and S plus are all the same. Okay. S, um, just to uh, R plus, uh, S tilde, 
such that when we consider this map from S to S tilde and apply local cohomology, the image is a finitely generated R module. So I, uh, okay, so this is, so it's, it is not zero now, it is just finitely generated. But notice that local cohomology with support in the maximal ideal are Artinian. So uh, finitely generated is same thing as finite length. So this is what, uh, so the, the map from S to S tilde is such that the map from HIS to HIS tilde, the image is finitely finitely generated or equivalently finite length. Okay, so now the map S to S tilde is compatible with Frobenius maps, respective Frobenius maps. Hence, so is the map in local cohomology, the respective local cohomology. Okay. Therefore, the image of this map is stable under Frobenius. So if you take an alpha in the image, alpha to the p, alpha to the p square, etc., etc., will be in the uh, in the image. Okay, so now, uh, so the first step, we're still continuing what we will do after we do the first step, that we have now identified an S tilde with this property. Now we enlarge S tilde to a finite S tilde subalgebra S prime of R plus, such that the composite map is zero. So somehow we will need to do this. Uh, uh, we will need to enlarge S tilde so that in the new uh, uh, in the new ring, the composite map from S to S tilde, local cohomology of S to S prime, is zero. Okay. So this is where the finite generation is used. So remember, remember that the way we have constructed S tilde is that the image here is finitely generated. Okay. So then we will find an S tilde for each of the generators of this thing, and then take a larger ring, which contains all of these finite extensions, and then take the composite, and then each of the generators will go to zero, and hence the image will be zero. Okay. So the idea would be to now reduce this to proving this, that there exists an S prime for each of the generators of, uh, uh, of this image. Okay. And this is, what is, uh, this is where the finite, uh, finiteness of the image is used. Okay, so now we will come to the step. So I'll do the step two of uh, of this uh, the proof now. And time permitting, I'll go back to step one and tell us how to uh, uh, discuss how uh, the S tilde is obtained. Okay. So here is a, a lemma uh, referred to as equational lemma uh, uh, with reference to an earlier paper. Okay. So let R be a Noetherian domain. So here is a point where I don't. Uh, don't assume it's local. In fact, I should not assume it's local. Okay, R is an Ethereum domain, and I is an R ideal, and alpha, an element such that the Frobenius iterates of alpha, alpha, alpha to the p, alpha to the p square, and so on, belong to a finitely generated submodule of this local cohomology module. Okay. Then there exists a finite R subalgebra R. Oh, sorry, I forgot something. Uh, finite R subalgebra R, R prime of R plus such that alpha goes to zero under this map. Okay. Uh, sorry, let me, uh, so this is what uh, we have. Okay, so just uh, if you apply this, so now you apply the lemma to, to S, to HIM of S, to each individual generator we would get some S prime that will work for that generator. And then we will take everything, the compositum of uh, the S primes for all of these generators. And that would give us uh, the uh, S prime that we are looking for. Okay, so this is, uh, okay, so this is the equational lemma. Uh, given an alpha, such that all its Frobenius iterates belong to a finitely generated submodule of that local cohomology module. Alpha can be killed by taking a finite extension. Uh, so, so let's look at the submodule generated by alpha, alpha to the p, 
alpha to the p square and so on up to alpha to the p to the t and as t varies okay so this sub module the family uh, forms an ascending chain inside a finitely generated r module so it must stabilize and then we would get this condition alpha to the p to the s can be written as an r linear combination of alpha to the p to the uh, s minus i as i varies from uh, maybe uh, sorry uh, sorry i should there might be a typo here it might have been zero so i'll check this sorry it can be written in terms of as an r linear combination of alpha to the p to the lower uh, iterates of uh, frobenius that's what uh, it says here that's what it says whether it's one or zero i i will check and fix the typo let alpha tilde so this is a homology uh, alpha is a homology class uh, so let's take a, a cycle uh, that represents it call it alpha tilde okay now write this as a i mean write gt to be t to the p minus 1 p to, g to the p to the s minus this quantity here so just write a polynomial uh, in t standing for alpha okay so write as a polynomial then what does this say alpha tilde is a cycle but when you apply g to alpha tilde so alpha tilde is a cycle means it's a tuple applying g means applying g to every i mean if i uh, substituting every entry of that tuple uh, in this polynomial okay so that's g of alpha tilde g of alpha tilde g of alpha is uh, is zero that's what this one says here okay so in other words g of alpha tilde is a boundary so this d minus 1 sorry d i minus 1 is the uh, is the map from c i minus 1 to c i so it's a boundary in uh, in ci in other words it's di minus 1 beta for some beta in ci minus 1 okay. so that's that's why we have this equation that's why this g applied to alpha is zero okay so what we will do now is to uh, or i uh, will sketch that there exists some finite extension r double prime in which beta itself is g of some beta prime and we'll see why uh, that would be useful okay so write beta as a tuple in uh, so this will be a d choose i minus 1 tuple uh, inside here and for convenience we have taken the same denominator uh, same exponent e for the denominators sorry not the same denominator there are various uh, j1 through ji minus 1 all possible value, d minus uh, values of them but which use the same exponent uh, below e and the numerators are in r okay so for each uh, i minus 1 tuple which describes this indices j1 through ji sorry uh, this should be strictly less not less or equal to uh, uh, less than or equal to d there exist a z index by that such that g of this z divided by this uh, element of r equals this component of uh, beta so remember this is the component of beta index by, for the index given index j1 through ji minus 1 and it's i mean and why is this true uh, why is this true well just expand this the statement out and multiply clear denominators by multiplying by whatever is in the denominator here to the p to the s so xj through xj minus i minus 1 to the e to the ps e to the p to the s we will get a monic polynomial expression for z where the coefficients come from r therefore it has a solution inside r plus okay, so that's how we got this z uh, that's why we got this Uh, elements z but there are only finitely many such z d d choose i minus 1 of them so we can add all of them to we can join all of them to r and get a finite r sub algebra of r plus okay. and some element beta prime inside c uh, 
the C i minus one of R double prime, which is just to put them together, uh, you know, inside. I mean, these things. I mean, this element here will li now live inside R double prime x, in which x j one through x j i minus one are inverted. A R double prime is chosen so that it can, it includes all these elements. So this whatever is in the brackets here that I circled lives inside this R double prime localization. So once to put all of them together, we would get an element beta prime inside inside here, and such that G applied to beta prime is in B. This is what. So now let's modify alpha tilde now inside R double prime. Now inside the check complex for R double prime. Like this. Okay. Now, because alpha tilde is modified by a boundary element, alpha tilde and alpha bar will will denote the same uh, cohomology class. Okay. So, alpha bar represents the image of alpha under the natural map. Okay. Notice that. Uh, uh, so, what is G of alpha bar? Well, G of alpha bar would be G of alpha tilde minus. That's this is where the shape of the polynomial is used. Okay, so it is like this, and uh, G of alpha tilde was the image of beta, because this this is about this is in the boundary, so it can be written like this. Then one can check that G and boundary maps in the uh, uh, in the check complex commute with each other. So we can write like this. Okay? But then if we evaluate all this, this just evaluates to zero. So in other words, G of alpha bar is zero. Okay. So now entries of alpha bar, okay, we can think of it as a D uh, choose I tuple, and these are integral over R. I join them to R double prime to get a bigger ring, R prime. And one can show that in C, in the check complex for R prime, R bar is a boundary. Hence, alpha goes to zero in H i of R prime. So this outlines the step two of the proof, which is that once we find a small extension, once we find one extension in which the image of the local cohomology map is finitely generated, then we can enlarge it to get it to zero. So this is the second step. Are there questions? Uh, no. No. So, so far we have not used that uh, R mm -hmm. is homomorphic to maze of Gorenstein. No, 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 no. That's in the next step. That, I mean, that is for using local duality, and it will be used now. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. So far, it's uh, it's very. I mean, uh, step two is very general, and uh, the other part, uh, the fact that if all the local cohomology modules vanish, then it's a big Macaulay algebra is also quite I mean, general. Oh. Okay, so now uh, uh, let's quickly look at local duality. So now we use uh, that, I mean, let uh, A n be an n-dimensional Gorenstein local ring and m a finitely generated A module. Then uh, this is the local duality theorem. Hello? Sorry, I'm hearing some echo. No, no. It's, it's okay. 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 Uh, yeah. Now, it's, uh, H i of uh, uh, local cohomology, uh, i th local cohomology with support in the maximal ideal, is isomorphic to uh, the matlis dual, uh, where d is matlis dual, of uh, the n minus one n minus i x uh, of m against a. So uh, this uses the fact that a is Gorenstein and um, uh, a is a canonical module for itself. So this is where D is a matrix duality functor on A modules, and this is the inject I mean, so home uh, of a module into the injective hull of the residue field. Uh, since it is home into an injective module, it's an exact functor, and one can also check that it takes finite length A modules to finite length A modules. Okay, uh, so now we uh, want to uh, give a uh, outline of a step one, 
which is to say that which says that if uh, uh, given a finite uh, r algebra s there exists a finite s algebra s tilde such that the map in local cohomology has finite length okay, so this is a little uh, this is I mean, whatever i'm going to do now is more sketchy than what i done uh, than the sketches that i did earlier so s is a finite r algebra of sub algebra of r plus send it's a finitely generated a module okay so what we want is a finite s algebra s tilde of again just to remind ourselves r plus the same as s plus such that image of this uh, local cohomology map from s to s tilde has fi is a finite length r module a module s module they all the same uh, uh, i mean if it is finite length as an r module same thing as uh, that for an a module okay now let's look look at local duality and the fact that uh, look uh, matlis dual is an exact functor okay so equivalently so when you dualize these uh, sorry uh, suppose we take these ext modules this map in ext okay so s2 s tilde is a map of a modules uh, so when you apply x it would reverse the arrow when x is x with the first argument varying and second one is fixed as a uh, it would reverse the arrow okay and uh, so we get this map of x modules when we take matlis dual of this arrow I mean, I mean from here to here is matlis dual okay. so then to say that the image of the map in local cohomology has finite length is equivalent to saying that the map in x has finite length okay and the advantage of working with x is that one can uh, these are all finitely generated modules one can localize and work okay and this will be used uh, uh, here now so this is what we want to show so let's take a prime p different from the max so uh, oh i see i, I sorry uh, p uh, p different from the maximal ideal of uh, not m n maximal ideal of so we will discuss prime ideals of a which is equivalent to discussing prime ideals of r because r is a quotient of a okay. so the result holds for r localized at p uh, that i mean we can just assume it by induction on dimension because uh, if dimension is zero then r is a field and all of these things will hold okay so uh, uh, so we can assume the statement uh, uh, that this is true by induction on dimension so the hence the result the whole theorem not just step one the whole theorem holds for uh, rp okay so sp is a finite rp algebra uh, rp algebra sub algebra sitting inside the plus of rp so there exists an s prime so uh, i apologize for this notation i want an s prime and i want to say that 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 thing depends on p so this is not a power p it is just to say s prime depends on p okay i cannot put it as a subscript then it is confusing with localization so this just says s the the superscript just denotes superscript uh, only to denote dependence on p okay so there is some finite sp sub algebra of its absolute integer closure okay uh, such that this map is zero so this is uh, so this is a, a, a proving the uh, theorem for uh, i mean assuming the theorem for in lower dimensions okay matlis duality for a localized at p is uh, gives the map uh, gives that the dual map uh, i mean this map is zero okay so i mean this map in local cohomology is the dual of the map in x so this must also be zero okay, okay. so now what do we have here we have a rp sub uh, sp sub algebra of uh, uh, of its absolute integer closure okay when we clear its denominators we will get some s sub algebra A finite s sub algebra s tilde p of r plus such that 
this module is not supported at p so this is this is the observation so not supported at, at b means that that is uh, 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 image localized at p is zero that's what uh, we mean by saying uh, this uh, 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 thing is not supported at, at p Okay, because when we take this and localize at P, we would get ah, when we take that uh, sequence after we clear denominators and work over S, and when we localize at P, we would get this. Uh, uh, we would get this. Okay, and. Uh, do this for each uh, 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 each p in the finite set. So now we look at the associated primes of this target module, this thing, and do this for each uh, uh, each uh, uh, in the pr associated primes of this, which are different from the uh, maximal ideal. Sorry, again, I I fix note. I'm thinking about as modules over A. So. Uh, other than the maximal ideal of A. Okay. So we will see that for each P in this finite set of primes, there exists an S tilde. Uh, I mean, there exists an S tilde such that the image of this is not supported at P for each P in that finite set of primes. So we will get this. But notice that we are thinking about the image of a map into this module. So the image is a, is a Finite uh, image is a submodule of this X to S A. Images inside images inside here, and at all associated primes of this target module, other than the maximal ideal, the image is zero. So, which means now uh, that in other the image has finite length because the associated primes of the image is contained in the associated primes of the target module. Therefore, the image can have only at most one associated prime, which is the maximal ideal, and therefore it has finite length. Ah, it's okay. So I am uh, I am done with the sketch uh, of this uh, this uh, 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 the first step of the, uh, the theorem. So are there some questions now, or I will. Uh, nothing as of now. So now I'll just, uh, so I'm done. I'll just uh, state one result uh, due to Sanai and Singh, uh, which uh, strengthens the, the previous re result, which is the following. So same hypothesis as in the theorem, d-dimensional local domain of characteristic p, positive prime, and uh, that's homomorphic image of a local uh, uh, ring, i less, uh, for i less than d, for every, uh, uh, finite R sub algebra of R plus, there exists an S prime such that the map is zero. That's part of the old theorem. The new part is that the field extension from the fraction field of S to fraction field of S prime is Galois. Okay, so this is we can not only choose an S prime in which the map in local cohomology is zero. We can also choose it to be uh, choose so that the field of fractions is Galois. Okay, so that this is the extra. Uh, thing here, and using this result, one can show the following statement. Okay. Look at the elements of R plus that are separable uh, over the fraction field of R, okay. and call that thing R plus set. Okay. So this is going to be a subring of R plus, R subalgebra of R plus. Then uh, H i of R plus set is also zero, because that's uh, 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 that's because R plus step can be written, can be obtained as a limit uh, in which we work with such extensions. We work with extensions in which the field of fraction, the extensions of the field of fractions is Galois. Okay. And from this, one can again show, uh, this is the same argument as we did in the first part, that R plus step is a uh, balanced big or Macaulay R algebra. Okay. So this is so there is a way uh, I mean, one can strengthen the earlier uh, the previous result in this fashion. Okay. So the, uh, uh, these are the references. 
uh, the paper that I refer to for most part of the talk is this Winnicke and Lubesnik absolute integral closure uh, in positive characteristic. And the second paper, with one discusses Galois uh, uh, and separability, is uh, Sanai and Singh uh, in this. So I'll stop here. So thank you, Manoj. Uh, we, we will take questions now from audience. They can unmute and ask their questions. Yeah, I apologize. This is a very